Okay, morning everyone and welcome back to the vlog. It's been a couple of months since I've done this due to work and things like that. But we're going to start off with the final completion list for the Sleeka. So what I've done to get ready is the last two jobs are speedo conversion, which I've done. I'm afraid I forgot to actually record this. But basically what happens is you take off this dash binnacle, uh, the key cover, all the plastics here which unfortunately cracked and I need to buy a new one. And then you can lift the dash out and you just pop the needles off. Basically you mark the positions of each needle um, and then you pop them off with a spoon or screwdriver. And then the, the white covers that you see are actually just plastic stickers. So you take the black original ones off the Speedo and put those on and then put the needles back. And before you box everything up, you put the ignition on and see where the rev counter needle moves and then you can readjust it so that you've got it correct idle and when it drops back to zero so yeah it wasn't actually as worse as i thought it was going to be but this is going to be a tough job next i've actually removed the driver's seat and um, because i've tried upside down and it's just not happening lying on the seat with my feet so what happens is the clutch hydraulics the clutch pedals connected to the uh the cylinder which is about this height on the firewall over in the engine bay so you're trying to get your arms up to about this height here so um my back's actually killing me trying to <laughs> trying to move about so i've decided to take the seat out put some foam in over this lump here and um, clear all this out and that should allow me to lie pretty much flat along the length and get my arms and move because your body's actually at that angle and then your arms and shoulders you're trying to go up so it's just agony and I'm a big enough guy, I mean, there's no way I'm fitting. Uh, so that's it, yeah, so that's a quick shot of the interior. Everything's good, I'm just going to crack on and I'll explain this after because I can barely get my own hands up in that gap, let alone a camera as well. Um, afterwards, I'll take a few pictures and explain it. And hopefully, um, what the plan to do is, where the pedal moves, there's a small bar that goes through to the clutch cylinder and we need to turn it i'm not sure which direction but that will then adjust the play on the clutch because at the moment um when you put the pedal down it's grinding gears and there's like it must be half a mil one mil of play before the clutch engages and disengages with the pedal movement so you're going to end up just burning out your clutch sitting at idle even you know when you're trying to change gear then so i want to get a good normal clutch feel um Basically, I had this flywheel skimmed and a new XEV clutch in it when I did the engine, um, if you go back to that episode. So everything there is perfect. Previous episode, I bled the clutch hydraulics um, by pressurizing them with that small tool. So that's in the previous episode as well. And then according to the internet and also loads of mechanics online, things like that, the last remaining bit is if you still have issues after bleeding it, you have to go in and adjust the um, the cylinder, the throw of the pedal. So that's what we're going to try and do today and see how that works out. Okay guys, so as you can see, here's my feet with my fantastic Subaru socks. This is the back seat, so I'm actually lying where the driver's seat would be. We'll try and go underneath the dash here. I'll get the torch in a second. Let's see. So, if you can see this uh, linkage here the the rod that goes into the black seal and um, i've slackened off that 14 mil nut uh bolt nut so um and i need to adjust the shaft by rotating it either clockwise or anti-clockwise i don't even know which way so it's trial and error um people on the internet say to do it clockwise and that should give you um a bit more play or whatever in the pedal We've got so much play that I'm thinking I'm going to try anti-clockwise first. Do a wee bit and then start the engine and engage, disengage, try and disengage the clutch, engage it and see what happens. But yeah, so as you come out, this is the crazy angle you have to be in the car to try and even reach this at the top of the firewall. Okay, so I've just tried it. I've moved it maybe... Um, one or two turns got like a millimeter of travel difference and I was turning it anti-clockwise and now I can't even disengage the clutch I started the engine tried to put it in first gear absolutely nothing 
can't do it. So I think the way to go is clockwise rotation. So if you're lying on your back um, and you can't get the gears in and out, get the clutch working, you lie on your back facing upwards and you turn the shaft clockwise and that will um, hopefully give you more play movement to disengage the clutch and engage it. So I'll have to go under, undo what I've done, take it back to the original length and then kind of per, uh, clockwise turn actually forces the shaft into the the, uh, the clutch cylinder even more um, and that will give you more movement on it. So fingers crossed next time. So we've just adjusted the clutch, everything's good. I've tried it on the driveway here in forward and reverse. Um, and actually just after that, I found, I thought that was gonna be one of the last jobs on my list, but unfortunately there was a bit of an exhaust leak um, near the back box. Um, again, it just comes down to a bad fitment. So <coughs> drive line, everything is good, but I'll try and crawl underneath here and show you. Um, let's see. Yeah, so here, where the back box, it comes up and over and crosses over the subframe here so it's not the best fitment anyway but this was a cheap exhaust going through the MOT history online I found that it had failed for a noisy exhaust and now there's basically a very very cheap slip-on one fitted so down there along the drive shaft you can see that kind of slip-on joint that is all right because the pipe slides in and the gas flow everything matches up it's all good so when it gets to the rear here so what you can see now is a load of exhaust paste and a bandage so that bandage is actually trying to fix on the other side up here in the bit that's against the chassis um, it was blown out so it's just no matter I struggled for hours with this when I got the car and realized it's a losing battle um, as I've mentioned this is just to get it through MOT this exhaust will be coming off I would never do this to my own car if it was a, it wouldn't be a permanent fix but you're not allowed to have blue whites in the MOT test so um, a bandage and the paste will actually seal up the hole what you do is you slap it all on cover it up uh, basically dodge the hole um, and give it 24 hours to cure then you heat the engine up slowly and the heat fin finishes it off and basically it's that's it good I mean what you have to consider is it fixes the leak to pass the test and there's no real pressure it's not like a pressurized line or something basically exhaust gas flows from the engine and out the tailpipe and this is just to make sure that it gets to the tailpipe and it doesn't blow out around your diff or anything so I mean as I say I don't like doing this but it will if it well if and when it passes the MOT it'll be getting a proper exhaust system um, and it'll be going to paint and some suspension there's a whole load of nice performance parts that I plan to do with it assuming it's fine roadworthy and it's worth spending the money on so after that um, I'm just basically ticking the essential jobs off the list to do right now and uh, we can take it from there alcohol. so now the other job on my list is a sensor now on the dash gauge there's two issues electrical wise down here on the fan the fan is always running and down here there's a fan switch and I find in the manual that basically if that uh, temperature probe is defective it runs the the engine fan all the time out of a safety feature so if you lose the temperature reading to the ECU it doesn't know and it just runs all the time so I need to order one of those it's not an MOT fail um, so right now I don't need it I can live with the fan always being on it's not a bad thing and having too much cooling worst case over thousands of miles you burn your fan out early yeah I'm not going to be doing thousands of miles so again it's on the secondary app, uh, list for when it passes MOT one job I do want to do now though is the dash gauge stop working and it's uh, let's see it's here so according to the manual and internet rumors and everything else there's very little research the manual does say that this is it so I'm gonna believe it I hope it is I ordered again off GT4 play um, I had to cut this down it had like a plastic cover so it was obviously designed for a wiring loom now this is meant to be the dash gauge probe it is a temperature probe but I'm still hesitant as a 
whether or not it will fit that. So it's really hard to tell. I just have to have a go, fingers crossed. Backup plan is I don't want to drive the car without a temperature reading on the engine. I know it's good, it warms up, it stays at a nice temperature, but if you're gonna be driving it down the road, you don't wanna take the risk. So as a backup solution, if this doesn't repair it today, I'm going to take this hose off, cut it and put an adapter in and wire up an aftermarket water temperature gauge and feed it through to the dashboard. So just as a backup and you can keep an eye on your temps, but let's not be negative. Let's give this one a go first and see what happens. Okay, here's another basic thing, guys, in case you don't know when you're starting to do jobs on your car. If you get a nut or bolt or anything with a thread on it that's tight, Try and move it back and forward in stages and wiggle it. That'll try and clean the threads and break any resistance at each stage you go. You don't just want to put a gun on a windy gun or a big torque meter and just hammer it because you'll probably crack the case and break the thread, snap the head, whatever. So this is starting to come out. I'm just going to work at it. Um, once I get it out, we're going to lose probably a lot of coolant anyway, but I've got that. I can top that up after. Size wise, it does seem to be right, so let's wait and see. So, one final note on the water temperature gauge that's it fitted. You can see down here, um, basically, I had to make my own connector, nothing fits. I run a wire around and spliced it into the original wireline connector, which was falling apart anyway. So, basically, it's just a wire extension there on the new sensor, and hopefully, that should do the gauge. Um, last thing. I need to do two jobs actually to put the registration plate on and book the MOT and that's it complete finally so um, I'm not going to start it now because that exhaust wrap needs about 24 hours I mean I went underneath the car now and it's already getting uh, quite stiff on the paste but the wrap itself is still a bit loose so where I put the white paste I basically put another layer just for good measure and after that um, just wait until the morning and get the paste on uh, again maybe we'll see <laughs> um, but yeah that's it wait until the morning the bandit should harden there's plenty of paste on it start the car up let it warm up the temperature check the, 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 the gauge thermometer in the dashboard make sure that cylinder's working if it's not I mean it'll go down with tea quite happily so um, it won't matter, I'll buy another gauge if it doesn't work and wire it in here. But yeah, so we're all good, so that's the offending gauge there. Um, everything else is good. Finally, no real leaks, nothing else to talk about. So I hope you enjoyed the series and yeah, next update, final update should hopefully be it's past the MOT and it'll be road legal and we'll take it for a first drive and a proper drive and then we can look at getting it booked in to the paint shop and get this horrible horrible home spray job rectified and find out what horrible secrets are lying beneath the paint because i have my suspicions this is all um, it's probably hard to see in the sun but it's all orange peel on this side and there's a huge fiberglass job here so it's see all this this is pretty much what a lot of it's like basically somebody just tacked it with their Halford sandpaper and a rattle can and look at that rough as a badger's bottom so yeah paint thankfully I will not be doing that I know my weaknesses and I don't have the patience to paint anything or even learn so no it's not happening but yeah mechanical electrical it's all done Thank goodness. So, hope you enjoyed this. I will keep you posted.